Thanks, Goose. Last year, Melbourne developer Hipster Whale had a mega hit on their hands with the tap-happy vertical hopper Crossy Road. It was basically a new take on the classic Frogger. Well, now they're back with another arcade reinvent, Pac-Man 256. The 256 in the title refers to a bug that was in the original arcade version. Basically, when you got to level 256, there was a weird kind of glitch on the screen that made moving to the next level impossible. This time around, the glitch is there from the very start, eating away and moving up the screen like a tidal wave, destroying all in its path. Which means you have to move. You need to navigate your way through an endless maze filled with ghosts all on the hunt. You do this by swiping your finger up, down, left or right. And Pac-Man has had a bit of an upgrade. The more pellets he eats, the faster he moves, and if you get a good rhythm going, you can be tearing around the screen at quite a pace. Yes, but to balance things out, the ghosts have also had a few tweaks. Pinky now chases you at near breakneck speeds, and we have an addition to the family in Glitchy, who seems to have caught the 256 bug. Along the way, you do occasionally have the help of power-ups. These are in the form of a freeze bomb which slows down ghosts, an actual bomb that explodes ghosts if you touch them, and my personal favourite, the laser, which basically is a get-out-of-my-way device. I love the laser. There's around 16 power-ups to collect, but I haven't played enough to get them all yet, have you? No, not yet. It's a little bit frustrating understanding how it all works, actually. When you die, you're presented with an end screen that has a kind of confusing design to it. Along the top, you're earning towards some sort of unlock. You can continue your run for a credit, but above that in a tiny box is a free play option. Plus, your power-ups can be upgraded with credits, but that can have a timer attached. And then there are prompts to watch ads to earn coins. I mean, unlike Crossy Road, which was blissfully simple, this all just seems a bit convoluted. True. And actually, when I first started playing this, I thought it was all about getting up that maze as fast as possible. But actually, it's more about getting multipliers, munching those pallets in a string, taking out ghosts, and getting as big a swore as you can before you get caught. So there's a bit of depth to it, a few rules to learn. Yeah, I don't know. I think if I'm going to play a game like this, I'd prefer the tap-tap-die simplicity of something like Crossy Road. It was just always clear what my goal was in each one of those little play sessions. It's the perfect mobile game to kind of pick up and play in short bursts. I'm just not sure I'm on board with this as a score chaser. I quite liked it. I like the presentation. And the classic arcade music and sounds, and the way Pac-Man explodes into tiny pixels when he dies. It's a clever reinvention of the Pac-Man design. I'm giving it three stars. Well, it just hasn't quite gripped me, so I'm giving it two. First game I ever played was Pac-Man. It was Ms. Pac-Man. And I played it in the bath, which is very dangerous. Almost died. Okay.